Welcome to the Yellow Belt section of the ECG Mastery Program. We're thrilled to have you in our course. We created this belt system for you for two reasons. One is we really like martial arts, and the other one is it's easy to understand. Most people know that the yellow belt is the first belt that you can acquire in most martial arts like karate or judo. The owner of the yellow belt knows the basic principles of the sport, the names of the moves, and so forth. Similarly, once you finish the yellow belt section in this course, you'll know the basic principles of the ECG and you'll be able to diagnose very important and potentially dangerous diseases. And you'll understand your colleagues when they speak about ECGs. And that will enable you to improve your ECG skills on the job further. It's very hard to learn from someone if you don't speak their language, right? So this yellow belt section will teach you the ECG language so you'll be fluent quickly. But let's not waste any time and dive right into the heart of the matter. I'd like to introduce you to the ECG curve, which consists of several distinct waves. Let's look at these waves in more detail. Let me give you a short introduction to the components of the ECG. Let's start with the QRS complex. The QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization. These QRS complexes are easy to recognize. They're very sharp and pointy spikes. After each ventricular depolarization, there must also be a period of repolarization, and that repolarization is called a T wave. The T wave can be positive or negative. Depolarization of the atria, on the other hand, is characterized by a relatively steep wave called the P wave. Its steepness here is in between that of the QRS complex and the T wave. So this is the QRS complex and it's the steepest part of the ECG. This is the T wave and it's the least steep part and the P wave is somewhere in between with respect to steepness. We usually can't see atrial repolarization mainly because it's usually hidden within the QRS complex. Let's have a closer look at the QRS complex which, as you know, corresponds to ventricular depolarization. Each component of the QRS complex has a name. The naming of these components follows a standard nomenclature. There are only five fundamental concepts that you have to understand when it comes to naming these components. Concept number one, the first downward deflection is called the Q wave. Concept number two, any upward deflection is called an R wave. Concept number three, any downward deflection that comes after an R wave is called an S wave. Concept number four, a second upward deflection is called R prime. And what about this wave here? Is this a Q? Is this an S? Well, to tell you the truth, people came up with a compromise here. They said that whenever there's one large downward deflection, then that's called a QS pattern or a QS wave. So concept number five says, if the entire QRS complex consists of just one large downward deflection, then this is called a QS wave. That's it. Now let's look at a couple of examples. Example number one. Here we have a rather classical case. According to concept number one, the first downward deflection is called a Q wave. According to concept number two, any upward deflection is called an R wave. And concept number three says any downward deflection that comes after an R wave is called an S wave. So we have a Q, R, S pattern here. Now let's check out example number two. As you can see, we have no initial downward deflection in this case. So according to concept number two, any upward deflection is called an R wave, so no Q wave here. And according to concept number three, any downward deflection that comes after an R wave is called an S wave. So we have an RS pattern here. Now let's turn to example number three. What I'd like you to do here is pause the video and try it out for yourself. Then come back and see how you did. Okay, so now let's see how you did. According to concept number two, any upward deflection is called an R wave. According to concept number three, 
any downward deflection that comes after an R wave and crosses the isoelectric line is called S wave. And according to concept number four, a second upward deflection is called R prime. So we have an RSR pattern or RSR prime pattern. Did you get it right? Okay, so let's try out another one. Again, pause the video and try for yourself, then come back and see how you performed. Okay, so let's see the solution. According to concept number one, the first downward deflection is called a Q wave. According to concept number two, any upward deflection is called an R wave. So we have a QR pattern here. Are you ready for some more examples? Well, here we go. Example number five. Again, pause the video and try for yourself. That was simple, wasn't it? There's only one concept that you have to use here, and that's concept number two. Any upward deflection is called an R wave. But let me tell you one thing. This type of R wave is usually quite rare. Usually, we would see a Q wave here or an S wave here. So you will only rarely see this type of pattern. And one final example. Example number six. Pause the video and try for yourself. Also quite easy, right? Only one concept fits here, and that's concept number five. If the entire QRS complex consists of one large downward deflection, then this is called a QS pattern. Here are the different examples again. Take a closer look at them. In example number one, we had a Q wave, an R wave, and an S wave. In example number two, we had an R wave and an S wave. In example number three, we had R, S, R prime. Example four shows a Q wave and an R wave. Example number five shows just one big upward deflection, which has to be an R wave. Example number six shows just one big downward deflection, which has to be a QS pattern. This is simple in theory, and we can follow the movement of electricity throughout the heart using this ladder diagram. The ladder diagram visually depicts the initiation of the electrical impulse at the sinoatrial node or SA node normally, followed by its propagation through the atria or ATR in this case, the atrioventricular node or AVN, and finally the ventricles labeled as VE. So when the SA node depolarizes, which is usually the first thing to depolarize in a healthy heart, we see this yellow dot on our ladder diagram. It should appear in the row corresponding to the sinoatrial node. The electrical energy then travels through the atria in order to cause atrial depolarization represented by this blue box. This corresponds to the P wave on the ECG. Then the impulse travels through the AV node down to the ventricles. The ventricles depolarize represented by the red box on our ladder diagram, corresponding to the ECG's QRS complex. We've left out the depiction of ventricular repolarization in the form of the T wave in this ladder diagram, but of course it can also be shown in a ladder diagram. So one more time. The SA node fires, followed by atrial depolarization. The signal travels down through the AV node, and finally, ventricular depolarization occurs. Great, I'm glad we've laid the foundation. But unfortunately, it's not always that simple. ECGs can be much more complex, and when they are, it's not always the same sequence of a P wave followed by a QRS complex and ending with a T wave. Sometimes these elements of the waveform are intermixed. In the next lesson, we'll look at an ECG that's a little bit tricky. See you there. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.